Hi, welcome to Beyond Politics. I'm Catherine Clark. Quebec NDP MP Huang Mai was one of three children born to Vietnamese parents who met while studying in Canada. Huang himself is a lawyer and a sports enthusiast, and he left behind the field of law in order to run for Parliament when he decided that he wanted to do something that would allow him to make more of an impact on his community. Huang Mai joins me now to talk all about life beyond politics. Wong Mai, welcome to Beyond Politics. It's just great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. And I suppose welcome to Ottawa, too, because it's, it's still relatively new to be in this city, to be an elected representative for your party. It's almost a year, but yeah, it's with uh, everything that's been happening. Oh, it's uh, What a year. Incredible year. Wow. Yeah. Did you, um, obviously no one um, could have predicted uh, Mr. Layton's passing. Um, which would have been a devastating shock for everyone in your caucus. Mm. But um, did you did you have any idea when you were heading into this um, idea of a, of a political future, of a, a political career, that it was going to be as fast-paced and ever-changing as it has turned out to be? Well, quite quite frankly, no. <laughs> I mean, as I said, like. This, this being the first year with everything that has happened, passing of Jack, uh, race to the leadership race, uh, so it's a lot of things happening and I've been very fortunate to have good uh, good position within the party, so it's been really busy. Uh, very, I knew that we uh, there was going to be a very steep learning curve, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the pace of it was uh, pretty surprising. Has it been exhausting? Exhausting, yeah. I would say it's been uh, pretty exhausting, but it's been so fulfilling, and it's been very. Uh, you, know, you you do feel a drive, you do feel the the passion of it, you do feel uh, the energy also, especially now with a new leader. So everything's been uh, it's been very fast paced, quick pace, but it's been um, as I said, very. Uh, you still feel hum humbled when you you walk in the parliament, uh, when you meet with your uh, colleagues. You do feel you're part of something very special, and I'm still enjoying it, still very uh, thrilled about it. That's good. Yeah. If you can survive this kind <laughs> of a year, then you can probably survive anything. I think so, too. Tell me about your childhood. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Brassard on the south shore of Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's the suburbs, so I went, uh, went there, went to school in Montreal, so back and forth. Um, you know, it's a regular suburb that uh, is growing up, and at that time, I remember when I was younger, you know, we used to play a lot of hockey outdoors. We uh, we play in the streets, and there wasn't that many developments, so it's basically, you know, rocks and, you know, you had uh, swamps and stuff. Yes. Uh, things have changed a bit, quite And it's a bit. all houses now? All houses, uh, commercial centers, uh, now that you're starting to have condos. Uh, buildings and stuff, so uh, it's uh, it's changed. Wow! Do you come from a big family? I have an older brother and a younger sister, so okay. we're three, so it's not too bad. But we have a lot of cousins and who actually are living in Bassa. So right. It's pretty close family. And a big family, then, and a family. big extended family. Yep. Yeah. And how did your mom and your mom and dad came to Canada? Is yep. that right? From Vietnam? Yeah. So, yeah. They uh, came to Vietnam. They came to uh, from Vietnam to Montreal. They came to study. They, they, they actually met in Montreal at university. Did they really? Yeah. So it was back in '67. You're kidding? Yeah, yeah. Oh my so goodness. it was before the war. So they they they, uh, they met at school. They decided to stay here when everything happened over there. So yeah. that's where that's where I grew up. Um, why why Canada? Why did they choose Canada for their schooling? That's a good question. My father was because the government was giving a grant to mm -hmm. study in Canada. And my mother is because her, my grandfather, her father wanted her to come to Canada, even though they had almost no clue what Canada was, other than the fact that they knew in Quebec uh, we spoke French. So that's why they sent uh, my, my, my mom there. But she was the first of the family to go there, and no one in the family 
had ever been here before. So. Uh, how old were they when they came? My mom was 17. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's so yeah. young. I was very young. To leave behind everything yeah. she knew. Too. Yeah, and most of her friends were going to France and Switzerland and stuff. So she, she was kind of angry at my uh, grandfather for having sent her here. Yeah. But uh, now, like with everything that ha has happened, you know, the family and everything, so right. I think we're very happy that uh, you know that was the decision. And um, how did they meet? I mean, you said at school, but yeah. was it just... So my father, well, I think at that time uh, there was a small Vietnamese community mm -hmm. and I think you know, they met each other, attraction or something. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Do you still have a lot of family in Vietnam? Yeah. Um, like my parents are now retired, mm -hmm. retired, so they're back and forth here and there. I still have my grandmother from my uh, father's side who's oh, over there. Nice. I still have a bit of family, well, you know scattered around Vietnam. Sure. So, um, growing up, what was your household like? Was it a political household? Was Not it really, no. No, <laughs> no I think, uh, my, my, no, I, when I, even now, when I speak to my brother and sister, they're not very political. Right. Neither are my parents, uh, although my mom is a bit more. Mm -hmm. But uh, really didn't uh, didn't really understood what I was doing okay. when I first got involved. So I had to sort of educate them in terms of you know what uh, what I was doing, what the NDP was all about. Right. Uh, but um, no, it was mostly with my friends when I was studying in law school that we had like conversations regarding uh, politics and stuff. But more or less with my parents. So when you were a little kid. Yeah. And you were thinking about what you were going to be when you grow up. Mm. Um, were you thinking more along the lines of an NHL player? <laughs> no, I knew, I knew I didn't have the size. So, <laughs> uh, But no, I was thinking more. I, I always loved sports. But yeah. I was thinking more either uh, a lawyer, because I knew I liked to argue, mm -hmm. or become a airplane pilot, because really? I, I like to travel. Huh. So it was one of, the, one of the two. OK. So you chose law. So I chose law. Why? Um, because uh, I knew that it's the basis of society. I knew it that uh, once you go there, it, it's kind of hard to get in, but once you're in, uh, it really helps in terms of under understanding society, understanding what your rights are. Uh, so that was for me a ver just the basis, so it was really important. Uh, also, my mother's a, a notary, so she was, right. she's a lawyer. So basically, I, I knew what she was doing, and I sort of liked what she, she did, but I wanted to do a bit more, so that's why I went into international law. And so Which I had, allows you to travel. Exactly. That's what that's what I did. It's too. very clever. <laughs> so yeah. you ended up in the Hague, is that right? Yeah. Well, the Hague. I went there to study uh, for a summer. Right. Took uh, international law classes, public and private. So great I went, place. Spent, yeah. What a fascinating beautiful. experience that must it have been. It was beautiful. Yeah. So the, it was the Hague, the uh, international law committee of the the Hague, uh, and so yeah, very interesting. Met people from all over, from Russia, from Brazil. You know, everyone who was studying law, but from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So it was. Pretty interesting. And um, you practiced, is that right? I did part of my articling in Amsterdam. Okay. So it was just part of it. But then after that, uh, I went to uh, practice overseas and more in Asia. Right. Yeah. Whereabouts? I started uh, working in Vietnam. So I was working for an international law firm. So I worked in Vietnam, then moved to Singapore. I uh, went to Hong Kong and came back to Montreal, all with the same office for the same law firm. Wow. Yeah. An interesting career. I mean, something very challenging um, it lets you be in and see different parts of the world. Yeah. What was the interest in moving into another career, especially at such a young age, when you could have kept building the one that you were in? Um, well, I didn't like what I was doing in terms of uh, working for a corporate law firm. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was really good in terms of starting a career yeah. and uh, you know being able to travel, being able to work on very interesting deals. So I learned a lot while I was there. But at one point, I, I, you know, I was looking at what my my boss was doing. Uh, he was a partner in Hong Kong, and it was like, he was like 55, 60, and was working working really hard. And I felt. That's not necessarily what I want to do in terms of the long term because you know you might get a lot of experience, but you're still really, in, you know, you're, he was working even harder than I was. It's not that I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm lazy, but it's no. Just so in terms you wanted of, your life to be. I want to have some wanted, balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so you made the decision to have some balance by running for politics. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. Good so, choice. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, that's not really. Yeah, the reason why I went I went to politics wasn't to get a balance. I no. knew that things would change, but it's more because I want to change things. Uh, actually, before going to politics, mm -hmm. I wanted to go into film school. Actually, I wanted to go into. Did uh, you go to film school? Well, I applied. They okay. they rejected my <laughs> my application, so, so that's so why. So politics I went. <laughs> is the second choice at best. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, film. I, I realized uh, I I really enjoyed it. I wanted to go into that, but I realized that if I really wanted to change things. Yeah. Yes. Uh, with my background, I think politics was kind of easier or mm -hmm. quicker. If and, and if I really wanted to have an impact on, on society, I think uh, you know, uh, politics is a good way to go. Tell me about the film aspect. Yeah. Um, has it, is that something that's interested you yeah. all through your life? Well, not through all through, well, I always loved movies uh, and I love uh, watching uh, movies and learning about you know different culture. Mm -hmm. I started li liking uh, documentaries and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea of going to films wa was m maybe more like how can we change things or help people in terms of um, you know bringing ideas. And um, one of the the movie that was th that really sort of moved me and but also made me realize I had to go into politics was Shark. Uh, so it's a, a guy from a guy in Toronto who uh, and won a lot of prizes internationally. But when I realized that the, the you know the, the movie is great, the message is really clear. But uh, when even though the message is so clear, people won't won't really change because. Tell me about the message because I don't know the movie. Well, the the movie is about um, shark fin soup. Uh, or sh the fact that uh, you know sharks are being destroyed mm -hmm. because of the fins, and it doesn't really it's you know so it, they're, they're, we're, we're we're affecting their environment, we're affecting uh, and there's a whole black market regarding shark mm -hmm. fins. So it's it's becoming either also criminal has an impact on on our environment, and all that for a soup that actually you know doesn't doesn't really add much other than prestige. Yeah. And um, I remember, um, you know, even though I, I, so I told my cousin and my, my cousin to, to watch that movie, and she did. And she also was born in, in, uh, in Canada, so she understood. But at her wedding, we did have shark fin soup. Wow. So I, I realized, you know, it's like she understood the message and everything, but for, for some reason. So I, I realized that maybe if you want to move things along, you have to sort of move, change the law or change uh, work in parliament and that's why I decided to run in politics. Fascinating. Did you expect to win? Um, well, I, I ran in 08, so I actually in 08 I had, you know, I knew my chances uh -huh. were pretty far away, but I did believe that I could win, uh, especially in my writing, you know, it was, it's been moving from, from the, the liberal to the bloc then came back to the liberal by 69 votes. So I knew that uh, there was a bit of shift. I knew that uh, at that time in 08 uh, with Jack Layton, I was hoping that what happened in 11 would happen in 08 because I knew that people in Quebec really understood and maybe more like uh, agreed with our values in terms of what we're putting forward with the NDP, you know, environment and against wars and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, I, I knew that people would understand. But it's just in a way it didn't happen. Uh, 2011, uh, luckily it did. When um, he was introducing you at one point, uh, Mr. Layton apparently um, singled you out and said that you were one to watch. And that's pretty, that's pretty high praise coming from your leader. Um, what is it that you are hoping to achieve? I mean, what, what is it beyond um, you know, having watched a movie and decided that there really is more that you could be doing yeah. to make the world a better place. Yeah. Um, was there an overarching sense of you want to change the world in a particular way? Well, I mean, one of the reasons why I, I joined the NDP was because of the, uh, you know, our stand regarding the environment. So that was something that I felt, you know, previous government did, did not do enough. And uh, so that's one thing that was really important for me. Also, um, when I, you know, again, the war in Afghanistan, that was something that for me was, was wrong. Uh, the way that where the government is right now heading, I'm not, I don't like it. So that's why I decided to get involved. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, just there's so many things that, uh, that needs to, to be, get, be changed when you look at what the government is actually doing right now. 
so I'll, I'll, I'll take my role right now. My role is in, in uh, national revenue, so there's a lot of things I'm working on, for instance, tax havens and stuff like that. So, mm. I mean, which, whatever, uh, whatever uh, role is g being given to me, I think I'll, I'll do it with pleasure. Uh, but uh, in terms of where we're going, there's so many things, as I said, that needs to, to you know, be addressed. We had the budget that was just uh, submitted and a lot of things that we don't agree with. So I think f my goal is just be, be part of that movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started also with Tom Mulcair being elected in, in, uh, in Outremont. And that's when, I, you know, because I knew about uh, the NDP with uh, Jack Layton. Mm -hmm. Because the message he was he was bringing forth what uh, was great, so I got the message, and then when I saw that uh, Tom got elected in Outremont, I realized well that's that's when the actually I bought my first membership for any political party, so that's when I started getting involved, and then now it's more like being part of the movement, get, getting getting things to grow, um, and you know whatever I can do to help uh, help make it a better world, I, I'll do it. How did you feel when you first arrived in Ottawa as a new MP? Was it um, was it a really different way of operating to be in Parliament, to be sitting in the House of Commons than what you were used to? Or did yeah. it feel like a more natural transition? Well, it's natural and it is very, and, and both different also in terms of, because uh, I used, after working for a law firm, I worked uh, on my own, so I was my own boss. I had my clients, which are banks and uh, uh, law firms. Uh, so I was, you know, the the master of my my schedule, yes. and now I have absolutely no control. No control. <laughs> like I I look at my BlackBerry and yeah. to know what I'm doing to the day after, right. or even at night, like what am I doing tomorrow? I have to look at my BlackBerry and uh, and during convention my BlackBerry died, so I was like, oh almost, no, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, so. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's good. I mean, yeah. it's a, uh, I have a great team, so that's really, uh, you know, it makes, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good feeling. I, I feel really comfortable every day when I, I you know, wake up and I, I look forward to the day. That's which positive. I, yeah, that's very positive. I remember, I remember working for the law firm, and I, you know, it's like on Sunday, I'd be really depressed. I didn't want to go yeah. work on Monday, but now every day, even though you don't get much sleep, and even though you work on weekend, I mean, I. I don't count the hours, so I think it's a good, uh, positive thing. Do you mind the um, the commute? You must drive it, do you? I drive it and take a train. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the train is good. Uh, you can driving. get more work done on the train. Exactly, yeah. exactly. No one talks to you in their car, though. Uh, well, it depends because we, we, you know, we uh, we commute carpool. with other car we carpool. Jeez. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. So we, you know, there is discussion, especially after leadership race. Yes. <laughs> Lot, lots to th talk about, but it's always fun. So uh, yeah, no, I, I like it both ways. And even taking the train, there's a lot of MPs in there. So. Sure. Uh, we talked very, very briefly about your interest in sports. Yep. You're quite an avid sportsman. <laughs> you played hockey as a yeah. as a kid. Well, I played outdoors hockey. Mm -hmm. I only started playing uh, uh, organized hockey maybe five years ago. Right. Yeah. So we a couple of friends are uh, we decided to you know it was about time that we actually started you know buying the equipment, playing uh, <laughs> in the rink, and so we took power skating lessons. We took Did you really yeah. as adults? We were like 30, 33 or My something. My goodness, yeah. Yeah. wow. Three, three, four of us decided to, you know, it was about time. And now, we're like, uh, we continue playing, so it's pretty, it's pretty fun. Um, you're a scuba diving instructor, is yeah. that right? Yeah, I am. How did that interest develop? Um, again, I think it was related to uh, traveling, uh, and I really, really love the water. I love uh, you know being underwater. And started when I was uh, living in Asia. I took some scuba diving, scuba diving lessons, and just you know uh, discovering uh, when you go to a country and you discover the land, you discover the culture, but also when you discover what's underneath, it's pretty, pretty interesting. So it's. Uh, yeah, this, this may sound like a, a silly question, but um, is underneath different? I mean, when oh, you're yeah. in different continents, yeah. what you're going down and you're seeing, because one tends to think of the ocean as just being the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're in different parts of the world... Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I scuba dived in, in Canada and uh, in Ontario. There's, a, there's in the St. Lawrence, there's a lot of uh, wrecks. So that's a, that's a different type of uh, scuba diving. And you sort of see history in the water. So that's pretty uh, interesting. When you go to a more tropical place, you'll see more color, more f different fish. Uh, you know, you'll see sharks. So it's... Um, it's like all every place is a bit different. Uh, although you know, in s certain parts you, you might go to Vietnam and and Philippines and pretty much the same because it's the same type of uh, water. But um, 
you know, it's just also a different, it's a different world when you compare it to where we live. So. Um, what is the feeling of being down there that keeps you going back to that type of? Um, it's just as soon as you get down, all your stress, every, all your thoughts, you just it just disappears. You're just uh, underwater. You're you're almost like a fish, uh, and uh, it's um, it's a whole different. You know, you see fishes doing their 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 day to day things, and you know, not really minding what what you're doing, and just watch it. So it's a sort of a diff very different uh, feeling that you get underneath. And are you ever worried about being consumed by something larger, with sharper teeth than yourself? Or? <laughs> Not really, no. No? no. You actually look forward to seeing something big. And that's uh, that's the, the whole, you know, if you're... Uh, I think that's probably why I don't scuba dive. Because <laughs> I wouldn't look forward to seeing uh, something big. No, I mean, big. like everyone who scuba dives, I mean, the first time we saw sharks, everyone went up on the boat and, you know, we had stories and uh, so it, it's it's something really interesting. And, you know, I love, to, I haven't seen a whale shark yet, but I'd love to see one of those and... I mean, there's so many things, to, beautiful things to see. Do you still have time to do these kinds of things? Not now? really. No. no, I used to also, you know, I one of the sports I really like is soccer. I, right. I played soccer here with uh, other MPs. We actually played against the media too. Um, but and I used to be a, a soccer coach. Did so you? that was for that was kids. Fun. For or kids. For oh, kids. nice. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That, and it was competitive, so it was very interesting. So it was um, just you know uh, right before I got elected. So now I. You don't, don't. You can't do it. Can't. No. Can't. Yeah. It's like two, three times a week. You can't do that. <clears throat> do you worry about the fact that you can't do those types of things anymore? Does it affect you? Or? Well, I think it's especially a question, as a young yeah. person. I'm not that young well, anymore. Well, youngish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm 38, <laughs> so it's not too bad. It's still youngish. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, f I mean, I don't really uh, see it as a as an issue in the sense that I know it's a question of balance. Uh, I know that I'm doing things that I, I need to take care of and I have a lot of responsibilities. I mean, as an MP, we do have a lot of responsibilities. So it's something that I decided to take on and I really appreciate what I have. And as I said, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really loving it. So I, I have no, no qualms with mm -hmm. that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tell me about your parents. Um, mm -hmm. Conversations with your parents now about your life in politics. Yeah. I mean, at first, you had to explain to them why you had the interest at all. Yeah. What? How do they feel now that you're uh, a member of parliament in oh, the yeah. federal parliament? Definitely very, very proud. Uh, I mean, uh, for them, because I remember with a discussion I had my, with my dad, and you know, even though I was an international lawyer, well, it wasn't enough, you know. So he's he's an engineer, <laughs> well, uh, you know nuclear uh, scientist so anyways for, for him you know being a lawyer was good but you know it's not that bad but and he told I remember he t him telling me you know it's like one day when you'll get elected that that will mean that you know that the Canada or Quebec has accepted you and that's that was a whole conversation about wow. being being you know accepted by society and he uh, He's, he, he is very proud, uh, and both of my parents are very proud. Actually, the whole family is very proud. Uh, but now my father is saying, well, once you get re-elected, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so. He keeps setting the bar higher. Exactly. That's not fair. That's not fair, no. but, you know, that's my father. I'm used to it. That's good. <laughs> Tell me about that um, acceptance aspect, though. Growing up, did you feel that you were not accepted as a member of the... No, uh, yeah, not me. Personally, my friends, yeah. when I grew up, uh, we had friends from all over. And uh, yeah, I'm still friend with my friends that I knew since we were three mm -hmm. and went to school. We had people from all over. So personally, it wasn't really a, an issue for me, but it was for more my explanation of how society works from my point of view to my parents because they came in, they have a different uh, perspective on, on things and I just wanted to sh let them understand that, you know, we, we are, especially here in Canada, we're very fortunate. I mean, we have a very open society and uh, I think that's very, very important and, um, you know, that's what I was trying to explain to my parents and I think they saw it and especially now. They, Do you think they felt it though? Did they feel the open society or were they affected that's a, by it? That's a very good question. I can't speak on their behalf, but I don't think they, f they feel it as much as I do. You know, for me, it's not really an issue. I, I've never been really victim to racism or, mm. or other than kids calling you names. But, yeah. that, you know, that's kids being kids, right? Even though, you know. But you never took it personally? No, really? not really. Yeah. yeah. I, I, 
I mean, no, I didn't feel that it was a, an issue for me. And you know, when I look at my friends from all different backgrounds, and especially growing up in Brassard, and, and you know, and that's where you have a lot of uh, uh, multicultural, a lot of different ethnicities, and you know, so and very a lot of acceptance. So it's uh, it's been really good for me. Do you mind the constant nature of the work that when you go home on a weekend? that you're still um, more of a public figure. Mm. Uh, in fact, you're much more of a public figure there probably than you are when you come to work during the week. Yeah. And you can't really grocery shop without being stopped. You can't go out for dinner without someone paying attention. Does that affect you? Or um, I, I mean, it's part of the job, right? right? And so when you apply for the job, you hope to get it. And once you get, when, you, when you have it, you, there, there are ups and downs. But people are really respective and, mm. uh, and respectful, I mean. And also, you know, you do have the benefits of you know you being there, bringing attention to a to a, a cause, or just I mean, there are some benefits. Of it. So I tend to have to look at it at, at a more positive way right. than, uh, than a bad way. I, I don't think there's any really bad way about it. What's been the best part so far? <sighs> Good question. The best part, I mean, it's just you know, for me, it's like being here, being in Ottawa, being. Uh, being in the house and, and seeing how things are, are, are moving along and being part of, you know, we do feel part that, you know, that we are being part of histories. Things are changing. And to be part of that, I mean, you know, obviously with the, our leadership race, the, the convention, being part of the whole uh, energy of it, I mean, that's, uh, that's something very interesting. And, you know, obviously the best part for me was to you know, actually be able to work with Jack at that, uh, right. at that time. That was something very... Uh, you know, he gave me uh, some some roles, and uh, and just you know having him on the phone, speaking to him, or even talking to him, it was uh, was pretty impressive. Um, when when he passed away, did it make you question your decision? I wouldn't say it, uh, it made me question the decision. Not really. I think um, I think we sort of felt that you know it was our turn that now to continue what he did. Uh, but obviously, you know, it's losing someone very important, and it's kind of a shock. It, it really hits you. So, um, and with all everything that happened uh, for his funeral, and you know, the, the love that Keynes had for him, you really felt that you were part of something, and and he actually really contributed to changing the world and changing how Keynes saw politicians, or maybe just saw him, but. Um, you know, it was something very different, and uh, I think we can all learn from from what happened, at, what, what he did, and from what you know happened after that. So it's uh, it's very positive, I think. So so far, you you are a lawyer, and you've practiced. Mm -hmm. You wanted to go to film school, and now you are a politician. One to watch. Is there anything else that you'd like to do? Do you have a bucket list? <laughs> Oh yeah, I think I have a bucket list, but right now I'm loving the job so much that I'll, you know, I'll continue doing what I, what I, what I, what I'm doing right now because I really enjoy it. Um, still, to be honest, I'm not really thinking about the future yet. Um, just uh, there's so many things I need to work on in terms of uh, where I'm at in, in in Ottawa in terms of learning the ropes. Uh, we can It's only been a year, but you know, we've learned so much. And, but I know that there's a lot to learn and a um, and lot to do, actually. Thank you for taking the time. It's really been a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you for having me, and it's been a pleasure for me, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm.